Welcome to the Rockland Ice Rink where today it's the annual game between the Hug Foundation Ice Huggers and the Boston Bruins alumni. This game all about charity. Hug Foundation stands for Help Us Give. This game moments away from facing off. Let's head to the ice for the starting lineups and the national anthem. We've been involved with the Boston Bruins organization for the past several years as a result of the illness and loss of our sister Linda, the Boston Bruins' biggest fan. Thanks to the Bruins organization, we have experienced this first hand one of the small gestures that has like hard times in the need to ease a difficult situation. Now it is time for us to pass along that spirit of generosity. We form the Hug Foundation to expand our giving beyond our involvement in be able to reach out to more individuals in need. Please visit us at the Hug Foundation MA.org. That's Hug Foundation MA.org. And at Facebook.com, help us give. We would appreciate your input to our fundraising events and most importantly, outreach to those we wish to help. Sincerely, Alex and Lisa Pazanson. Folks, right now, let's meet today's starting lineups. First, let's meet the Ice Huggers. Wearing number two, he's a tri captain. Please welcome Bob Cashin. Number six, Paul Williams. The assistant captain, number eight, Will Whitworth. He's a tri captain, he's also a model. He's played with the Boston Bruins online and the NHL online. Number 10, The New York Rangers alumni, the NHL alumni, and with the Bay State Breakers, it's number 13, Paul Fitzgerald. <laughs> Wearing number 12, Olivia Brown. She's a lot of us in this game. Watch out for that little one, Fitzy. He's been a longtime supporter of the Hunt Foundation, number 15, Jack Cashman. <laughs> this next player, one of our many special guests here today, he's in the world singer and songwriter, he's an R&B pop artist, and his song Push was featured on an ESPN documentary. He's a former Sony ATV writer, and his music has appeared on VH1 and ABC, number zero, Louis Bella. Please welcome David Jensen. 
Ladies, gentlemen, boys, and girls, hockey right. fans of all ages, welcome once again into the Rockland Ice Rink for today's game between the Boston Bruins alumni and the Hug Foundation Ice Huggers. As always, every year, I am Mad Dog Matt Nelson bringing you all the action this time from the penalty bench between the glass. The Bruins alumni wearing their typical black and gold. The Ice Huggers white jerseys with black lettering. Ceremonial puck drop here at center ice. With all the Byzantines. Stacked rosters all around for these teams. Bruins alumni headed up by Rick Middleton, a couple of other All-Stars as well. Rookie of the Year in 1998, Andrew Raycroft, now an analyst on the New England Sports Network. And Danny Lecatour getting ready to run in his fifth Boston Marathon to benefit the Boston Children's Hospital. Jack and Joan and Cashman. Captains take center ice for the ceremonial. And thank you so much. For Puck drop. Paul Fitzgerald. Dropping the puck. We are just about ready to get underway. Danny Garcia and Specs Common, the officials for today's game. Jeff Dumart, the goaltender for the Bruins today. For the Ice Huggers. It is number 30, Danny White. Over the years, this game has brought in quite the athletes. Ray Bork was here last year. Packed house to see. Mr. Bork, who just got back from Pyeongchang, where his son, Chris, was playing for the United States Olympic hockey team. Sweet. So we await puck drop here between the Bruins alumni and the Ice Huggers. Hug Foundation, headed up by Alex Byzantin. Help us give. This game will benefit Teen Challenge of New England. Special thanks to our dignitaries here today as well for coming out and supporting us. We have a slug for Randy Rockettina. Tommy's got some. Gotta watch on the ice is Specs Commoner. Clown with Barnum and Bailey Circus and. Also in the house, John Doomsday Howard. I once met John Doomsday Howard at Buffalo Wild Wings watching a Ronda Rousey fight. He's not very tall, but boy, is he a big guy. Fighting in the middleweight division, I believe. Welterweight for the... UFC. The Boston College line starting for the Bruins alumni, Al Peterson, Tommy Songin, Muller, and Billy O'Dwyer starting for the Bruins for the Ice Huggers, Dan Lacatour, Doug Smith. Star of the movie Goon back in the day. Some say it's the best hockey movie of all time. 
Others heartily disagree with that. Fitzgerald and Bob Cashin on defense for the Ice Huggers. Right through. Loose in the crease, a backhanded shot, and it does not cross the line. Tested early is Jeff Dumar at number 31. He's been the goaltender for the Bruins for the last, I believe, three decades. Even though, quote unquote, he's only 29 years old. Bruins clear it out, looking long for Muller. It goes all the way down for icing, not whistled. Now Fitzgerald around the boards. Muller with over 1,100 points in his NHL career. And now this is Dave Jensen. Bruins looking to get something going as Doug Smith comes to the bench for a change. He's replaced by Chris O'Neill. O'Neill with the puck now on the half boards to Chris O'Neill. Now the Bruins have a two on one. Oh, Dwyer, Muller, and Muller now semi break back in its shot in the legs of Dalton. Now Songin didn't get as much on the bomb as he wanted. And the Hug Foundation clears it out. It's taken there by Glenn Featherstone. Featherstone, one of the guest instructors of the Dave Jensen DAJ Hockey Academy. Now, Townshend on the ice. He is a member of the Canada Black Hockey Players Hall of Fame. Number 48 for the Bruins. Of course, black athletes in the NHL. They come few and far between, but celebrated this year as it's Willie O'Ree's, I believe, 20th anniversary of him making his Boston Bruins debut. The one who shattered the NHL's color barrier. Willie O'Ree, the goaltender for the Boston Bruins. Now a shot is loose by Dumart off the blocker to the corner boards. Now Allen. So Peterson looking up for Townshend, doesn't connect. The Ice Huggers have it. Now it's O'Neill. Shot is loose. Dumar makes the save. Now it's Townshend. Looking for Graham Allen. Doesn't connect. Olivia Perone, who has played in this game since its inception, I believe. On the ice now for the Ice Huggers. Townshend getting around Fitzgerald. His shot, top shelf, and he scores. Deflected off the glove of White. And in, and the Bruins alumni are on the board first. The Ice Huggers not expected to compete for a victory here today. But you never know, last year they almost came away with the win before the Bruins turned it on. About halfway through the second half, this game played in two halves, as opposed to the standard three periods. Andrew Raycraft, the Calder Trophy Award winner of 1998 on the ice now. Bruins analyst on Nesson. I'm sure he's headed there right after this game ends because the Bruins do have a game tonight against the league leading Tampa Bay Lightning down in Tampa Bay. Now it's a three on one, three on two as Virtue gets back. Olivia Perone can't control it. Lacatora finds it. Dan Lacatora, the former Boston Bruin. 
Thank you. Now, loose is, they just pointed out the fact that there's nobody running the scoreboard. Raycroft trying to come up with this one. Many fans remember Andrew Raycroft as the goaltender that was traded to the Toronto Maple Leafs for a first round draft pick. And that first round draft pick turned out to be Tuka Rask, the current goaltender of the Boston Bruins. Now Middleton in for Raycroft. Bruins alumni just getting back from a swing in Canada. That's right. Getting back late in the week. And a goal for the Ice Huggers. Dan Lacatour putting it in on the team he normally plays for. And it is all tied up at one. time is left, there is no scoreboard on as of yet. So Dan Lacator tying the game up at one. Assisted by Jack Cashman for the Ice Huggers and we're all tied up at one. Thank you, there's your energy down front. How would you like to do late this year? Turn your virtue down. Now Tommy the Bomber song in two on one with Muller. Muller just out of reach. Muller on the wraparound. On to the blue line for Billy O'Dwyer. O'Dwyer back up for Songin, looking for Featherstone who is causing trouble in the crease. Now Wentworth is off sides but not called. Out in front for Jensen. That didn't connect. I said all the way down and frustrated Wentworth. Expects to come and back on the ice after visiting the Bruins bench. Now donning a wig, now three on two for the Bruins alumni. The Bomber song and feathers it through to Mullins' big hit, uh, backhand. Oh, Dwyer shot and a save. Bobby Allen shot, deflected wide. And now a three on one for the alumni, uh, the Ice Huggers, excuse me. Jensen shot and a goal for Dave Jensen. And the Ice Huggers on top. Two to one. Scoreboard finally on. There's approximately 15 minutes left. Al Peterson now to Townsend. Townsend, forward of the goal line outside to Bill Bennett. Now O'Neill. Looking for Pat Lee. He doesn't connect. Right now in goal from Fair Academy, it's Emily Smith. It's now in goal. Now 
Watson has the goalie down. The net is off its moorings. No goal, and a faceoff is coming up. There's a goaltender change for the Bruins. Dumart's out. Great word on who the new Bruins goaltender is. Kevin Childs on the ice. He's skating for the Bruins, but he's representing the Ice Huggers. Tuesday night, Grand Man Island, known as Man and Grand Monier. And then Wednesday night, we're going to Edmonton, we're going to throw the Bruins getting back late Wednesday night, early Thursday morning is... Dalton makes a nice save. Kevin Charles had a pure hat trick up in Canada in the span of 1 minute 24 seconds in one shift that has never been done before in pro hockey. Of course, you think of quick hat tricks. David Pasternak comes to mind, the Bruins winger who had a hat trick in about eight minutes the other night against Carolina in that phenomenal comeback. They were down four to one with 10 minutes to go in the game and they came back to win six to four. A wild game down in Raleigh, North Carolina. Hoping for that same magic the other night against Florida, but they were shut out and we have another Ice Huggers goal. It's three to one, Ice Huggers on top. And it was Lakator again, his second goal. Lakator with his second play. Jason Goldberg with goal. Assisted by Middleton and Raycroft. Well done, Ashley. Scored for the yacht. Left wing circle, pick three, Mike Fletcherstone. This is good job. Raycroft coming up with the turnover. The goalie turned forward here today. To Middleton backhanding it through the slot. No one on the receiving end for the Bruins alumni. Chris Crowder, first game back off of a broken ankle. 
Nice hugger is in in the Aaron passes. O'Dwyer is fighting for it. Billy O'Dwyer comes up with it. To the front of the net. Backhanded shot gets his own rebound. The Perks are following a shot. Al Peterson with it now. Peterson off the board is back for O'Dwyer. Now Tommy the Bomber Songin. Back to O'Dwyer. The Ice Huggers take it, but O'Dwyer gets it right back. O'Dwyer's weak backhand complete to Virtue. Virtue's saucer shot. And we have a collision. Wentworth colliding with one of the Ice Huggers. No penalty called, even though it was clear interference. Danny Garcia specs calm with the two officials. There is, there was six men on the ice for the Ice Huggers. So Dwyer roaming the ice. Virtue was held by Jensen. Now a shot goes wide and a goal. A bad angle shot. And it finds the back of the net. We're all tied up at three. And now Specs Common. Specs Common is waving the goal off. Not sure why, but Songin wants a piece of him. Tommy the Bomber Songin going after one of the official Specs Common. And Specs Common, he's getting the nuggies from Tommy Songin. And Specs is out towards the Bulls bench. Specs over the boards. Tommy Songin throwing one of the officials over the boards. And now the Bronze are beating up Specs Common. Featherstone throwing the hook. And Tommy the Bomber Songin throwing the haymakers. A ragdoll on the Bruins bench. Spex has no hope of survival. And he is finally thrown back over the boards. There's going to be fine suspensions, arrests. Someone's going to be headed to the penalty box. And the, the goal is good, so we're all tied up at three. Mullen gets the goal, and we await word on the penalties on Tommy the Bomber Songin. So it's Mullen from Songin and Terry Virtue. The Specs still trying to regain his footing on the far boards. He was just assaulted on the Bruins alumni bench. So about 11 minutes left in this period, all tied up in three. Specs putting his hair back on. Tantra and skip to stick. Trying to get to his backhand, and it's swept away. Tauchin out in front looking for Bobby Allen, doesn't connect. Danny White. Gold weight onto the ice for the Huck Foundation now. O'Neill behind the net. The goal is down. White can't connect on the one-timer. Out to Lacatour at the point. Back to O'Neill in the high slot. Lacatour comes to the bench for a change. A shot, loose puck, and he's saved by the Bruins goaltender. Bobby Allen. 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 Bennett. Bill Bennett. His shot. Deflected away. Nine 
Goldthwait across the blue line, he gets it back. Goldthwait at the faceoff dot, pass for Perone, doesn't connect. On the one time. Sanford's shot, no good. Just under seven minutes to go. Shoving away. Puck is in the back of the net, but no goal whistle. Face off. Shot off the face off. This one ramps up high and wide. Featherstone at the blue line. Featherstone thought about teeing it up. No slap shots allowed in this game. Two on one. The pass a little bit too far ahead. And Featherstone has it drifting back. He starts one high. And it's kept in by number 19 of the Ice Huggers. That is Jason Goldthwaite. Chopped away, the Ice Huggers setting up shop in the Bruins zone. Both way back handing it over to Joyce. Save made by Emily Smith, the new Bruins goaltender, finally getting the name. Ray Croft's line back on the ice. <laughs> Only a matter of time before the penalty shot, the annual penalty shot happens. Glenn Featherstone is the Bruins have numbers of ice. Featherstone shot off the left pad. And the ice is right back into the Bruins zone. Raycroft. Yeah, Featherstone rather drilling one of the ice huggers. Almost put him over the boards into the Bruins bench. Poor Fitzgerald. Yeah, Bruce Crowder's shot, stick save. Chris Colquitt. Chris Dalton, rather, the ice huggers goal. Now it's Doug Smith, the star of the movie Goon. Shot Smith has it somewhere in the pads and it's lofted out into the neutral zone. Childs clearing it out for the Bruins alumni. Featherstone averaging 6.73 penalty minutes per game. That is an astounding amount. Five and a half minutes to go here in the first half. Twenty-nine games for Doug Smith for the Carolina Thunderbirds. 179 penalty minutes in those 29 games. Now it's a two-on-zero. They get a two-on-one, Cash and able to get back. Crowder in alone. His shot off the inside of the post, and it's in. Bruce Crowder with his second of the afternoon. It's four to three, Bruins on top. Raycroft was in with Crowder. With it. Boston Bruins alumni goal scored by number 32, Bruce Crowder. 
Getting into it with number 71, Pat Leahy, in front of the Bruins bench. Look for them to keep going at it. Raycroft and Allen, the assists on Crowder's goal. John Kassman back on the ice for the Ice Huggers. Allen backhanding it, intercepted by Smith. But Allen Peterson intercepts. Peterson with it now. He may hold the record for the longest the time between goals is loose. Dalton makes a save and a whistle blows. There's a pile up. Dalton is under Billy O'Dwyer. And Specs has a stick between. He's been impaled by a, a stick. Actually, Looks like he needs an Advil. Specs common with a stick right through his gut. Specs still fighting with that stick. Gotta watch out for that stick. Specs Coleman might poke someone's eye out. Now it's center ice. Seems to be breathing okay despite having a stick going right through one of his lungs. He's headed right to Brockton Hospital after this for emergency surgery. Still no word on whose stick is through Specs Commons gut as Song and shoves Fitzgerald down to the ice. No call. Terry Virtue looking for Townsend, doesn't connect it. The Ice Huggers numbers up ice, it's four on three. Your brother's Ice Huggers. The first year we played this, the girls killed them. Alex Hansen went to the penalty box earlier in the game for turtling in a game of spotlight and for wearing a Superman pajamas. That's Terry Virtue with under a minute to go here in the first period. Goldthwaite backhanding it around, looking for Perron. Instead, it's Terry Virtue. Virtue into the slot and intercepted by the Ice Huggers. Now it's Kevin Childs. Childs spinning around for Virtue. Virtue goes across the blue line back for Childs. Now 30 seconds left to go. Childs in high slot, backhanding around for Townsend. His shot, Townsend blocker saved by Dalton. Kevin Shiles now with 10 seconds to go. Stick away. Nets loose. Last second clear. And the buzzer sounds. The first period has come to an end. And the Bruins are on top 4 to 3, but only barely. The Bruins alumni with 14 shots on net. The Ice Huggers with 11. As we're going to have a special guest in the intermission for you. But until then, we're going to step aside, take a quick breather, and bring you that and the second half of action right after this. Get my friend out of here. <laughs> oh, that poor guy. All right, we're here with the MVP of the emergency room. It's Specs Common, one of the officials. 
So far, we've seen you assaulted on the Bruins bench. Oh, it's brutal. They have no respect for the shirt. You know? Are you, you going to press charges? I don't know. Uh, I don't press anything. If you notice, nothing's ironed. I don't press anything. Yeah. We've seen a stick in pale. You take us how that, that one happened. The stick in the belly? The stick right through the gun. I didn't see it coming. One of the guys, he's a big guy, obviously. My back was turned. Next thing I know, right there. I think I'm okay. I'm a fast healer. So you were skating pretty well, even though you had a stick right through one of your lungs. Oh, you know. How were you able to control your breathing? You got two lungs. You shut one off. Nah, uh, you know, it's, it's practice. All right. On a serious note, you've been with the Bruins alumni, Bruins alumni now for a number of years. Close to you, 30. Close to 30. You keep coming back for more. What keeps you coming back and uh, involved in the charity work that the Bruins Foundation does? Well, I, enjoy, I love the crowd. I, I'm here for the crowd, you know, to entertain. Uh, and, and we raise money for organizations all over the country. And I love being with the guys who I saw. You know, I, I saw most of these guys play hockey. I'm a big hockey fan. So to be with them, to watch them good, do, do good deeds and to raise money and, and to have a great crowd is just wonderful. It looks like you have a special relationship with Tommy the Bomber song. Yeah, and yeah. every game, he's the one to come after you. Take us through how you got to know him and get involved with the Bruins alumni. Tommy and I go way back. He's one of the first guys that really uh, recognized my ability to do what I do. And he, he and I, he's my straight man and I'm the comic. And he uh, loves to take it a little over the edge. He loves to give me that little extra throw over the boards or whatever, which is fun. It makes it, if it doesn't look real, the crowd doesn't buy it, you know. But we've been, we've been working together for a long time, 25, 30 years. Got any big plans for the second half? Ah, uh, the second half. I got a couple of things here and there, yeah. yeah. All right, we look forward to it. Specs comment. Thank you for joining us, and thank you for helping out the Bruins Foundation and the Hunt Foundation. My pleasure. Good. All right. We're here with Glenn Featherstone. Glenn, back in Rockland for another year of Ice Huggers Hockey. Tell us what's going on today with the Bruins alumni. I love it. It seems like every year, uh, I think Alex is doing some good drafting. The, the Ice Huggers get better and better. But it's always an amazing event and, uh, you know, fun game. All the guys know each other. But uh, it's competitive at the same time. So, you know, great event every year. Been a crazy few weeks for you guys. Just back from uh, Canada swing. Tell us about the Bruins alumni season. I actually didn't uh, go on that trip. That's a little too far for me. I was stuck in a truck or a car. But uh, yeah, we played a lot of games this year all over uh, all of New England, and um, just a, you know, it's a great success. It's always fun to be out with the guys. But you know, when you see, especially with the kids, smiles on their faces, and you can raise some money, you know, it always is fun. You got the injection of young blood this year with uh, Andrew Raycroft joining the roster. He won the Calder Trophy in 1998 after I think you were already retired. Talk about the Bruins roster today and how it's how it is kind of playing different generations of Bruins hockey. Oh, absolutely. I think uh, I think my first game with the alumni was about 16 years ago. Johnny Busick was still playing, and Mill Schmidt was coaching, and. Uh, Pi McKenzie and those guys and you know it's now it's a new generation younger guys coming up and I actually look and I go geez I'm right in the middle now my next phase is retirement so the Bruins are doing having a phenomenal season I don't think anybody projected them to be number two in the division and on the torrid pace that they are does the excitement around the alumni games kind of tie in with how well the Bruins are doing I think so to some degree you know the the whole city is really grabbing on to the Bruins. I mean, some people might say they over, they're over they overachieving or, you know, they're living up to expectations. And uh, it's a fun team to watch. Very exciting, a lot of speed. And they're competing every night. And, you know, they're showing great success. So the Irish Heritage in Boston have a lot to do with each other. This game is on St. Patrick's Day. Tell us, in the Bruins, do a lot with St. Patrick's Day with the warm-up jerseys and the auctions and stuff like that. Tell us about what this holiday means to the Bruins, the Bruins alumni, and the uh, the foundation. Well, I mean, you know, St. Patrick's Day in Boston. I mean, does it go any better? Yeah. So uh, it's nice. I think maybe that's why they plan the game for one o'clock, so all the troublemakers can go out after this. 
But yeah, it's a lot of fun. Good day to have it. So what keeps you coming back and uh, playing with the Bruins alumni? Uh, again, it's it's an opportunity to get together with the fellows and, and have some fun. But, you know, to raise money and it's great when you, especially when you see some kids and, and the excitement that, you know, they probably don't know most of us old guys, but they see the, the bee on the jersey and, and they get excited and, you know, it's a great time. Happy St. Patrick's Day. All right, we're here with the man, the myth, the legend, Alex Bazanson. Alex, this event, a huge success every year. Tell us what's going on at the Rockland Ice Rink today. It is. It's a great crowd here today. This is, I think, our sixth year of doing a Hug Foundation hockey game with the Bruins alumni. And it's always our biggest fundraiser every year. It's great to get the crowd out here, get the Bruins alumni. They love coming down to uh, the uh, Abington, Rockland area. They bring so many players, they had to put three on our team because everyone requests doing this game. It's a great time every year. We really enjoy having them down here. So the Byzantine family have a lot of history with the Bruins. Tell us about how you got involved with the Bruins. Well, it's a long story. The TV show's not long enough for that. But uh, quickly, my sister was a huge Bruins fan, and when she got sick with cancer, they really uh, stepped up and treated her great for the last two years of her life. And uh, we, we wanted to do something to uh, remember her, so we started the Hug Foundation. And uh, Bob Sweeney from the Boston Bruins Foundation helped us along, along with Terry O'Reilly and Rick Middleton and all the guys. And uh, that's why it's kind of special for them to come down here. So the Help Us Give Foundation formed in Lisa's memory. Uh, tell us about what you guys do, where you guys are, how to find your, your info, all that good sure. stuff. Sure. Uh, we help families in need, basically. Anyone that needs help. We're a very small organization, but we try to help everyone we can. We donate memorabilia to other fundraisers. And uh, you can find us on Facebook at uh, Hug Foundation Help Us Give or HugFoundationMA.org on the web. And we're there to help anybody and uh, help out with your events with donating some raffle and auction items, too. Anything you want to add? Yeah, next time, come on down. All right, we're here with Olivia Perron. You've been heavily involved in this game, I think, since the very get-go. Tell us about your history with the Huck Foundation and the Ice Huggers. So I met Alex when I was 18 and uh, still in high school. And I, when he was first starting the Ice, Ice Huggers and the Huck Foundation, and I thought it was a really great idea, and I loved being involved. I played for the first time when I was 19, and in that first, or no, 20, and in that first year of the game, half the proceeds went to a boy in Abington that I was good friends with when I first started playing hockey, so I got to see firsthand what Hug did, and I think it's just amazing that there's a foundation out there to help when you need the help and things you shouldn't have to worry about. What's it like playing on the ice with the likes of Rick Middleton, Ray Bork, all the Bruins legends? So it's really cool. I grew up skating at this rink, so when Ray Bork played one year and when Nifty plays, I remember being little and wanting to be a famous hockey player, so it's really cool to be in this rink and play with all of them. And I tend to forget I'm playing and find myself watching while I'm skating. So it's a really nice experience. Women's hockey in this country, I think, is hit an all-time high this year with the United States winning the gold medal in the Olympics. Tell us what the excitement has been around women's hockey and all what women's hockey does for the community, really. So I think it's great. I grew up and there weren't many girls teams around when I started. I was one of the only girls who played. For my high school boys team, there wasn't a lot of options. So to see them do so well, it's bringing that attention to it. And there are more and more young girls getting involved. And I think it's awesome. All right, we are back here at the Rock of Ice Rink for second half action between the Ice Huggers and the Bruins alumni. New to the ice, comedian Dave Russo. He's wearing Rick Middleton's jersey and no other pads, so he's fairly recognizable. There's peace on earth. 
Uh, David Jensen trying to pull in. David Jensen trying to convince me at the intermission that his team was winning. Russo. The shortest guy in the he ice. Four three. Bruins on top. What a shot by Doug Smith, the star of the movie Goon, and it's all tied up at four. The ice hockey is giving the Bruins a run for their money today. They were up by two at one point. The Bruins stormed back to score a three unanswered. And now Doug Smith has tied it back up. Leahy and Jensen on the assists. Couple of pros there, Pat Leahy and Dave Jensen. The Jones Brown Chiefs, that's where the Hexen Bowl is played. The Molson Hawks, the Phoenix Rovers, Springfield Packers, Dalvins, and also American Sheedy. And he gets the goal. Who says the tough guys can't score? Now right through the crease, you no know, ice hunger on the receiving end. Emily Smith and Chris Dalton in for the Nets. Raycroft shot, no goal. Back over to Raycroft. And deflected away by Pat Leahy. Bobby Allen, Allen back in, drop pass for Tommy the Bomber song in. What a goal, they completely blindsided the goalie. That's embarrassing for a goalie. And Songin from the faceoff dot, the goalie didn't know where it was, and Dalton was completely fooled. He thought it was behind the net, looking for the outlet pass on the other side, and it never came. The puck was already in the back of the net. Five, four, Bruins on top. Peterson with it. Peterson leaving it behind for Mullen. Mullen back to Peterson. 22 minutes to go in the second half of action here. Bruins alumni and the Hug Foundation Ice Huggers. Now Mullen at the blue line. O'Dwyer. O'Dwyer gets it back. His cross slot pass. A shot and a goal. O'Dwyer was in on that one. It's six to four Bruins. the goal song of the Chicago Blackhawks, Chelsea Dagger. Gunnerstone getting credit for that goal. And the backhand tuck, and it's seven to four. The Bomber song in getting that one. And now the Bruins are just toying with the Ice Huggers. You know, attempt something that's never been done before. Aaron Specs common going at it with Songin again. Songin shoves the back of Specs' head. Songin throws down the gloves of the stick and he's going at Specs. The bomber at Specs and Specs' clothes come off in one fell swoop. And Specs says uh, he doesn't understand it's 30 degrees outside. He looks ready for the beach. Song in two minutes for stripping Specs. So it should be a power play here for the Ice Huggers. Not so. Oh, Dwyer in.
and number six one touch and throw, tackle throw, two running chairs, and seven four running runs. Mullen in the high slot, backhand between his legs. Now low Peterson shot and a save by Chris Dalton. I think we're going to attempt something that's never been done before. I think we're going to venture over to the Ice Huggers bench and try to talk to someone live during the game. Stay tuned. Now Featherstone. Emily Smith between the pipes. The girls of all nine. Len Featherstone. He's got a goal. Which is a head goal on the court. Watch the job. Two goals to assist. He's one of the years ahead. Billy O'Dwyer. Dwyer feathering the blue line. Leaves it behind for Mullen. Mullen's shot. And a goal for the Bruins. So we're here now on the Ice Huggers bench, live with Doug Smith. Doug, you scored a beautiful goal first. Your thoughts on that? Well, to be honest with you, it's the first goal of my career. And uh, honestly, I really don't care. I would rather have the five-minute penalty minute, to be honest with you. So, I've been hanging out in a, in a place you're very familiar with, the penalty bench. Talk about your hockey career. Uh, my career was uh, pretty unique. I didn't start skating until I was 20 years old. And I was able to make it to professional hockey when I was 23 years old. And um, I played the role of the enforcer. And it was a, a position and a job that I really enjoyed. The enforcer, a lost art in the NHL today, as evidenced by David Backus's match penalty the other night for nothing in particular. Talk about the evolution of hockey as they moved away from kind of the fighting and the enforcer role and more more goals in the back of the net and more flashy plays. Well, obviously the game's changed a little bit. Uh, they're trying to at least uh, slow down that role, uh, premeditating fighting and things like that. Uh, once in a while you'll see a fight, uh, but it's, it's not like the days I played where guys like myself were designated to do that role. All right, so the movie Goon, some say it's the best hockey movie of all time. Others not so much, but we won't talk about them. So the movie Goon, quite the legacy, and it's really intertwined, I think, with the history of the NHL. Talk about the movie, your role in it, how it came to be, all that good stuff. Well, I'll first say that uh, although I enjoyed the movie, I still will always say that Slapshot was the king of hockey fight movies, so to speak. Uh, but, you know, my involvement was that I wrote a book about my playing days and someone from Hollywood basically read my book and decided they should at least highlight the enforcer role that has been a part of hockey for a long time. And although the movie is more comedy than seriousness, um, there's still a little patronage paid to that type of role. All right, so the Ice Huggers started off strong. You were up 3-1 to one at one point. Bruins storming back, scoring three unanswered before the Ice Huggers tied it back up at four. And now the Bruins with another four unanswered. It's 8-4 to four. Bruins. What's the strategy for the next 16 minutes? Well, I'm going to go out and start taking the body and uh, see if I can slow them down a little bit. You might have to, they just scored another one. It's now nine to four. Bruins on top of the Ice Huggers. Doug Smith, thank you for joining us. It's quite the view from the benches. No goal, no goal. Eight to four. Big save by Dalton. Doug Smith back onto the ice for the Ice Huggers. And he gets an immediate chop from Sanford. And now Smith and Sanford jawing at each other. Now intercepted. A shot, glove saved by Smith. Now Fitzgerald down low for O'Neill, doesn't connect. Terry Virtue. Long saucer pass off the boards, looking. Icing waved off. Garcia looking right at the bench. 
on the ice soccer saying no icing. Doug Smith sends it in, rings it around the boards. He takes a shot from the Bruins bench. It's Bennett. Now Pat Leahy with it. Leahy cross and missing on it was Doug Smith. Smith being assaulted by Bill Bennett in the corner. They're holding each other's sticks. Now Thompson. And Smith comes back to the Ice Huggers bench. Jensen with it now. Sticked away by Air, uh, Emily Smith. Now Terry Virtue with it. Trying to feather it over to Townsend, doesn't connect. The Ice Huggers have it. Townsend will go for a change. Dave Russo back on the ice. He has replaced Rick Middleton. Blocked and wide by Smith. Now Andrew Raycroft. Wentworth back on the ice for the Ice Huggers. Saved by Chris Dalton. This one gloved down by Featherstone, who has it now. Featherstone bobbing and weaving his shot off the shoulder and wickedly handcuffed Dalton. Now it's Cashman. Cashman loses it to Featherstone. Specs needs a new set of glasses. Now Specs gets checked into the boards by what a poke check! Oh, and what another excellent save as Dave Russo moving the goalie stick further and further away from Dalton, who now has to come out and get it. Russo wreaking havoc in the ice hugger zone. That takes a little shot from Dan Lacatorn. Now Russo trying to bother and weave his way through. And it's broken up. Now it's Dan Lecator. Three, uh, four on two rather for the Ice Huggers. The shot does not go. And a half minutes to go here in the second half of action. Andrew Raycroft. Goldwith back on the ice, replacing Wentworth. Loose puck, no one knows where it is. Bruins change out their forwards. Bomber line back on the ice. Billy O'Dwyer now two on one with Tommy Songin. Songin give and go with O'Dwyer. Doesn't connect. Cashman back on the ice for the Ice Huggers. We're now trying to get it going. Dwyer trying to back end it up for Songin. Three on one, the Ice Huggers can't control it. A shot off the helmet of Smith. Rebound attempt and an excellent save by Emily Smith. We'll have to review that in Toronto. That one dropped off the crossbar, we believe, but it didn't make it on. But then again, I don't listen very well. So, face off coming up here. 
Who was your tie? You with the big glasses. Hey, you know what was that a goal or did they hit the post? Never mind, DP. Miracle, seriously. Never mind. Alright. So I wish I could sign it. There are some specs for a <laughs> ruling on that. Slap shot's not allowed in this game. That was the ruling. It was a slap shot, so the goal does not count. It's 8-4. Bruins all on top of the Ice Huggers with about five minutes to go. Doug Smith. A shot and a save. It's not a perfect ending. It's not a perfect ending. It's not a warning by the official to settle down. A face-off coming up here. Spex Scarman has a new set of glasses on. Adequately sized for the ego of some of these guys. Face-off on the end of the drama line by O'Dwyer. Front bounces and left wing boards. Ross Brooks, stay by Emily. Loose, no one knows where it is. The Bruins come up with the loose puck. Now all the way up for the Bomber. Bomber in on a breakaway. Songin, what a save by Dalton, who stacked the pillows and came up with a save on Tommy the Bomber Songin. Now Smith, back in it over to Jensen. Shot the flex to the end boards. Who's in front now? Sanford in on a semi break. Sanford back in it to Terry Virtue. Virtue dangling, holding, gives it off to Bill Bennett. Bennett drifting towards the net. Now goes forward to the goal line. Out to the blue line looking for Virtue. Doesn't connect. It goes all the way down. All the way down now to Emily Smith. Yeah, Sanford on the right wing boards out in front and doesn't connect for Township. O'Neill comes up with the puck, could be a semi break. It's a three on one. O'Neill sweeping it over to Cashman. Cashman throwing it on net. Yeah, Jensen has it. A shot and a goal. It's a goal. They score. So the Ice Suggers finally getting one. It's eight to five. Don't say it's a comeback. The Ice Huggers finally getting one. There's about two and a half minutes left. Now goalie down, Dalton was dead to rights, and the Ice Huggers able to clear it out. Now it's White. White in, shot, saved by Emily Smith. And she holds on to the face off. The face off coming up here. Like a toe with it, a shot. And Emily Smith with the save. Loose on the half boards, and the Bruins come up with it. Specs Carlin. Took a bathroom break and it looks like he took a piece of the bathroom with him. Specs common. It looks like he's having a pretty crappy day. I oh, thank you. Now yeah, Pat Leahy. Did someone hit the deck. Jensen in a stick battle, no call. Let's 
Bill Bennett comes to the Bruins bench. Now Wentworth shot in a glove save by Emily Smith. Now White. Sanford comes to the Bruins bench. Now Townshend's going to come off. Dave Russo back on for the Bruins alumni. A whistle, a stoppage. We have a timeout call. Hey, hold on, folks. We have a timeout here. A timeout on the ice. A timeout here. Mike Williams, he just proposed to live here for all. What a moment. The official title on the ice, Perron, we're going to have to talk to her again. She just got proposed to on the ice here with the Bruins alumni, and she said yes. What a moment here at the Rock and Ice Rink. And she said yes. Plot twist. Mike Williams and the now future Mrs. Mike Williams, Olivia Perron. <laughs> Danny Garcia going off congratulating Perron. And he might be the uh, resident, the uh, keeper of the peace. So Mike Williams and Olivia Perron getting engaged here at Center Ice. So we're gonna roam the bench, the Bruins alumni bench, as she's showing off her new ring. So a new puck, Olivia Perron keeping the puck, I think, that was on the ice when she just got engaged. Now Dave Russo going after Perron. We've seen spectacles, but I don't think I've ever seen a proposal live on the ice five feet in front of me. Now Mike Williams in for a penalty shot. Williams and Perron going for two. And Emily Smith stones both of them. Dave Russo goes down. Four minutes to go, and we have. I've, I've seen it all, folks. I've seen it all. We're going to talk to Mike Williams and Olivia Prone after this game. We'll find them somewhere. This one's sent all the way down. There's about three and a half minutes to go here in the second half. It's a blowout, eight to five, the score. Bruins alumni on top. That's sent all the way up. That's a 10 number of the to the left there. Bobby Allen on it. by Williams. Official, nobody on the Bruins alumni knew that that was going to happen. Ball by the 
Breaks it left side. Jabbed at by Dave Russo. But a question. A shot off the post. The post for Wentworth is calling for it in the high slot again. Now Fitzgerald walks in and the save by Emily Smith. Ray Croft line back on the ice. Thank you for the people that are clapping. Have you had a good today? Because I've been shot. Oh, wait. Now the Bruins alumni 4-on-2 up ice. Crowder looking for the hat trick. Off to Dave Russo's back end. Walked away in front. And now it's a 2-on-0 the other way. Set ahead for Doug Smith. Smith getting assaulted. Oh, what a glove save by Emily Smith. So we're on the Bruins alumni bench. We're now joined by Dave Russo. Dave, first of all, have you ever seen a proposal on the ice during the game after a timeout was called? I have not uh, seen a proposal, but with the uh, two penalty shots, they both missed, so they both failed. So I believe that their wedding is going to make it because they both uh, they both uh, experienced failure at the same time by missing those. Penalty shot. Doesn't even tell him winded. But yeah, they uh, they both failed together. They both smiled. So they're gonna make it. I think this marriage is gonna be the top 51%. God bless. Love it. So Spex Common just dropped the puck. He lost his arm. From the elbow down, he lost his arm, his hand, the whole thing is gone. We've seen him impaled. And he's shaking hands with himself. Just a suggestion. There's some of a shot there, and a save by the goalie. Just north of a minute to go here, it's eight to five. Wow, I lost my mind and he lost it. Bruins on top. Man, they saw coming up here. Only this guy just to come at the Hunt Foundation. All right, we'll save them again on the numbers. The middle of the three, five, one, seven, three, five. One minute to go here in the second half of this game. Eight to five Bruins alumni on top. We've seen it all here today, folks. A proposal, a penalty shot, a double penalty shot. The Bruins alumni down by two. The only thing we haven't seen today is a hat trick. More on that momentarily. Williams off the blocker of Smith up high. 3425, 3425, and 3528. Down to 25 seconds left. Devin George. Oh, a shot and a goal, Dan Lakator. Lakator with the hat trick with 20 seconds to go here in the second half. And what a goal for Dan Lakator. Marlon looking for the Hattie. Sargon, the buzzer sounds, and this game has come to an end. Eight to six. The Bruins alumni remain undefeated here at the Rockland Ice Rink. And we're going to hop on the ice and get the thoughts of Mike Williams and Olivia Perron, including as well as some of the Bruins alumni. Eight to six, your final score. Back in a flash. And thank you to all folks who All right, we're here with the newly engaged Mike Williams, Olivia Perron. Mike, a stroke of genius. How did this how did this plan come about? Uh, well, I picked up the ring a couple weeks ago and this place has always been a big focal point in our relationship, so I figured it was a good time to do it. 
All right, timeout called with three minutes left. Nobody knows what's going on. The Bruins bench is confused. Olivia, what was going through your head? I thought it was a regular timeout, and I was really not expecting anything and was highly thrown off. And I don't know how I missed the entire plan going on around me today either, <laughs> but I'm really happy. So, Mike, you chose this event to, uh, to propose. Talk, talk us through your relationship, how it came to be, and why this rink is so important to you guys. Uh, this is where we met. Uh, done a lot of big things here. A couple, couple years ago, we broke up, and then two years ago, we started talking to each other after one of these games, and here we are again. All right, your, your thoughts on what's been a crazy day for you? Um, I don't think I have many words. I, I knew something was up when he kept telling me it was nothing, and I just kind of ignored it and then was so focused on the game, I missed everything. And then once the game had started, I was like, well, nothing's going to happen, and we, it was business as normal until the timeout, and I, I don't know, I still can't process it. Last question for you both. You just got engaged in front of some of the greatest Bruins of all time, as well as a rink full of your supporters and friends. Tell, tell me what that's like. I mean, it's fitting for us. We bonded over hockey. We both grew up at this rink. We've been here forever. Our closest friends are all the people we skate with that I think it was only fitting that it included the Bruins alumni. And it's definitely a very fun story to tell. Oh, if we could, I knew we weren't going to win on the ice, so I might as well win, you know, off the ice and have her say yes. Congratulations, guys. Thank, Thank you. you. Well, we're in uh, Rick Middleton. Yeah, I'm sure, but a Bruins alumni. Obviously, we're giving the Hug Foundation. All right, how you doing? Uh, Boston comedian Dave Russo here, playing for the Bruins alumni. Actually, uh, Rick Middleton said, hey, Russo, can you play for me? And I said, uh, all right. So he gave me a shirt. So uh, when I took over for Rick, he was a minus two. Now after the second period, he's a minus one because uh, they scored while I was on his shift. So that's not a good thing. But anyways, uh, it's Russo. I'm always on the road. Google me, DaveRusso.net. Love playing with the Bruins alumni. Love the Hug Foundation, Alex Bazanson. And, uh, you know, I give a lot of money to charity. I do. Uh, she's a dancer in Las Vegas. All right, I got to go. Thank you. We're here with the ref who had the ring, Don Garcia. Tell us about what's going on at Rockland Ice Rink today. Well, first of all, we had a great game. Terrific game. The Ice Huggers held their own, but the Bruins obviously won. Uh, we also had a proposal at Center Ice. She said yes. Never which, seen before. Wild. Wild. Maybe seen it once or twice, but that's pretty cool. That's a really, really cool thing, especially because she said yes. So we talked to uh, your partner during halftime, yes. uh, Specs Common. Yes. What's it like officiating with him and the comedy he brings and lightens up the atmosphere? Well, I try not to. I try not to look when he's impaled by a stick, or you know, I try not to. He loses his arm. I mean, he is really a great, great professional, though. He is. Uh, he is a, a clown extraordinaire, a uh, entertainer extraordinaire. So you've officiated some great games over the years, including in the NHL. What's it like as a fan of the game and a student of the game, skating alongside some of the legends? Oh, it's terrific. It really is. It, it gives you an appreciation for the game, especially the older they get, because the more finesse they use, right? They might not have the quickness that they used to have, but they still have the skill, and it's really, really a treat to watch. Um, and I've gotten to uh, referee some pretty fast guys, current guys that, uh, that fly, so... It is, when you're down at ice level, it is a whole different world. All right, so tell us how the plan came to be. How'd you get the ring and take us through the proposal? Well, so I'm the only guy on the ice with pockets. So uh, Alex Bazanson uh, gave, uh, gave me the ring. Best referee in the league right here. I'm going to tell you something. And he's of Cuban descent. There's not many Cuban referees, but if there were, he would be the king. I think I'm number one in Cubans, yeah, because I'm the only one. And Cubans, but uh, yeah, so uh, so yeah, they they just sprung it on me at halftime and told me, uh, you know, could you hold on to this ring and maybe blow the whistle with a minute left or two minutes left? So at an opportune moment, there we had it. Uh, your final thoughts on a wild afternoon here in Rockland? Well, it's not over yet, and it's St. Patty's Day, so let's uh, let's celebrate a win, uh, let's celebrate a great day, and uh, happy St. Patty's Day.
All right, we're here with Boston comedian Rick Middleton. There was the name on the back I'm gonna, of your I'm shirt. I'm Dave Russo. Rick Middleton was on the back of my shirt. Rick Middleton's nifty. He's young. He doesn't remember Rick Middleton, who's uh, top five goals, top five. You know, I don't have all the statistics. All I know is that he's a Hall of Famer. He's nifty. He's number 16. I'm Boston comedian Dave Russo. I played in place of Rick Middleton. That's why I had the number 16 on. And this young man asked me what I thought about, or had I ever seen two people get engaged on the ice? And no, I have never seen uh, two people get engaged. They also had these two, the young man and woman, do a penalty shot against the goalie at the same time. And they both missed the penalty shot. So they both failed together. And I think that's a sign of a good marriage because they went off together holding hands and happy. So if you can feel together, not score together, you're going to stay together. All right, now hopefully he'll soon put the bun in the oven and we'll have more hockey players to spread the good word of hockey. With Bob Cormier, Director of Hockey Operations for the Bruins Alumni, tell us what's going on in Rockland today. Well, this game is always one that we uh, enjoy doing. We've done this about 13 years in a row. It's put together well. Alex Mazangin does a great job, uh, and we have a lot of fun at it. You know, the guys that we compete against are uh, class guys, and, and this, this is really, really enjoyable. You know, one thing you may not know is we do about 40 of these games a year throughout New England. Um, we even travel up through Canada. We just got back from uh, New Brunswick, did about four or five games up there. We're the most aggressive uh, alumni team in the National Hockey League. Um, and, and it works out great, you know, not only for, for the teams that play against us and raise the charity funds and everything, but for us, you know. Let's remember, once we leave the National Hockey League, um, the thing that we're going to miss the most is probably the locker room camaraderie and, of course, being on the ice. Some of these players start doing that when they were two years old, and then all of a sudden when you turn 40 or 35 or 40 and you're re ready to retire, certainly your life changes drastically. And the big drastic part of that is being together with the boys and, you know, what goes on in that locker room is just a lot of fun. You know, it's uh, giving each other a hard time and, and, uh, and, and laughing about it and remembering back when uh, maybe Rick Middleton played with Bork or vice versa in different games that they were at. So this is stuff that you hear throughout the game. So it makes it a lot of fun for both sides of the team. And you get a little sweat going, which is a lot of fun. And of course, after that, here we go. Now the I'm going to get... The right finest now. trainer in the National Hockey League, bar none. And as far as director of hockey operations, forget about it. The absolute best. Very nice to say. Thank you. Thank you, Don. That's Don Garcia, who just interviewed. Uh, he, he's our number one referee, run Cuban referee in the world. But anyway, so that's what it's all about, guys. It's, it's about getting together, having some fun, raising some funds for charity. You know, we do games that sometimes raise up to $80,000, and an average game might raise thirty. So it's something that we, you know, that people put together, bring us in as a charity event. A lot of fun for these players out here, if you're into hockey, to play against guys like Joe Mullen, who won you know, three Stanley Cups with Calgary and to, and to, you know, play against Ray Bork, Rick Middleton, Terry O'Reilly. You know, how do you beat that if you're a hockey guy, you know? So that's what it's all about. So you mentioned you've been around the Bruins alumni for a while now. You get to hang out with Ray Bork and Terry O'Reilly, Rick Middleton and all those guys. What's it like as a, a fan of the game and a student of hockey? Yeah, I mean, I've been doing this for about 22 years now as a trainer slash director of operations, running everything that goes on the ice, off the ice, making sure it goes off on time, all that stuff. And, you know, how do you beat this? Meaning, um, you know, if you're a hockey guy, what can be better than being with Ray Bork or Rick Middleton or Riley or even any of these guys? One thing about hockey guys, they're blue collar, they're you and I, um, and, and that makes it fun because nobody's a big shot in these rooms and say that they're better than anybody else. Hockey players are the best, and I think everyone would agree to that. So it's a lot of fun for me, and I enjoy it a lot. All right, so a minute left. Referee Don Garcia calls a timeout. There's a proposal on the ice. You guys knew nothing about us, about it. Take us through that. You know, you know, uh, Joe Mullen, who again is our Hall of Famer in that room today, turned back to me and said, "I thought I've seen it all sitting on this bench, but I've never seen that." And we all agreed. I need to say we knew nothing about it. We're all kind of looking at each other, and what was going on. One thing you saw tonight was Rick Corbin, who does the clowning out there and everything. So we thought maybe he had a new skit coming up with about a minute left in the game, and that was kind of odd. So I'm looking, saying something's, something's different here. I mean, how do you beat that? Obviously, two, two aggressive hockey people, and uh, what a great time to do it. And, you know, to be part of it, you know, it was, it was cool. It was cool. What other word can you use? It's about it. Appreciate you guys being here. It's nice that you guys can come out and, and uh, you know, and, and, and film us in a fashion where we can promote this and let people know, because a lot of people don't know. I'll mention what the alumni does sometimes to some people, and they don't get, you know, what we do and how, and we're out here doing it. So things like this are great for us, so I really appreciate you guys doing it.